Good morning, everyone. It's me, Jason, on this beautiful May morning. Uh, it is May the 4th, so may the 4th be with us all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've made a video. I've been pretty busy with both my internship and uh, with schoolwork as the school year is coming to a close. Uh, it's going by very fast. We're about halfway through my college career, and uh, yeah kind of scary but it's life and we're just riding the wave uh, so hopefully it's gonna be nice this weekend I can go out with my camera and maybe go shoot some stuff uh, not sure where I want to go I was looking at some places in Mass and in Rhode Island um, maybe we'll go to New Jersey or New York it's kind of a far drive but we'll see what what kind of uh, views we'll get um, for the weekend uh, so I'm just gonna go right ahead. I've got. I'm gonna talk about two things. Um, one because uh, it's an event or a conference a reaction, uh, and then the other one is just I think uh, it's in. It's related to news uh, and events. So I'll talk more. I'll talk about that one first, which is that Oculus is not going to be at, at E3. Uh, they won't have a presence there, and you know people have found that to be a concern um, that probably one of the bigger hardware manufacturers will not show up at this game conference uh, but you know I think there's it's all it's that it's that whole line of uh, VR gaming is a future but it's not the future of video games so I think um, I think they're very, making a very strategic decision here and uh, they're kind of differentiating themselves away from the core gaming uh, crowd the crowd and the audience and you know I think they might pull some strings that uh, that Bethesda has a uh, decided to do last year where they're having their own kind of conference uh i know ea does like an ea play conference kind of outside of e3 but still during e3 so i think that might be kind of the shift um especially since we did just have some vr conferences like vr la um that was m one of the more consumer friendly conferences for vr um but i think right now because the industry's in its it's uh striding years um they they're fo more focused on supporting developers rather than trying to reach out to the consumers um so i think that's a smart decision on them and um which kind of transitions into my next uh almost reaction for the news uh which is uh the unity vision summit happened a couple uh yesterday at, uh, yesterday a couple days ago um and i was just kind of reading the the recap on it and the highlights i didn't get a chance to watch it all but what i got a gauge of is um their undeniable support for vr and then now they're kind of itching into the ar um sector of the market uh which is definitely a smart move for them um, they, they talked about how, um, the VR industry in its first year of consumer VR made $2.5 billion from zero to 2.5 billion, which is incredible. Um, we actually believe that the revenue of the industry will surpass what analysts have said. Um, but I guess we won't know until it happens. Um, but they're very optimistic about consumer adoption by 2023, which is a far, long, long time away. But um, if you really think about it, it's only six, six years, you know. The iPhone's been around for 10 years, so six years um, before adoption. And they said the, the, the main aspect of success for... Uh, VR to really gain that adoption and to really really build upon a hundred million devices sold uh, will be the mobility of the of the technology um, and it's not as much as saying mobile VR you're taking your iPhone you're putting it in into one of these cardboard boxes um, it is the 
the notion that I will take my PlayStation VR headset wherever I go. Uh, I don't have to be tethered to my PlayStation 4 um, or tethered to a console. It will just I will have the freedom and bandwidth um, <clears throat> to support that device. Bandwidth is huge. Um, we will probably not be getting high experience, high quality experiences. Uh, wirelessly until 5g is announced until we get that one gigabit per se um one gigabit per second speed uh for downloading and uploading and streaming we won't get to that point yet so it's it's not it's more of external influences um rather than what's happening internal because there's some incredible experiences that could be enjoyed at a wireless uh level but the it's just the bandwidth of other kind of t telecommunication technologies that are that are really kind of pushing it back a little bit more um i'm gonna read a quote off from uh an evolutionary biologist richard dawkins who discussed about virtual reality and it got pretty deep i'm not gonna lie um he was just he he challenged the uh, audience by saying virtual reality is a software of the brain um, he emphasized that we do not see faithful, unadulterated data from the real world. Instead, what we see is a constructed model world created by the brain in much the same way as VR software constructs an apparent reality to in, our, in the computer. Now, if you know me, you know how much I love saying that we live in the Matrix. And this quote kind of alludes to it, too. That we are nothing more, our brain is nothing more than just a computer. Um, which is true. It's a tra it's a source that transmits in uh, information to other sources, um, and it's pretty powerful. Um, and and how he relates certain biological aspects to VR, and that's what's going to make VR so appealing in the future, is that connection that it'll have with our bodies. Um, uh, so to continue on, they really had that push for AR and mixed reality. They showed a demo with Vuforia, um, showing how augmented reality, um, it was more of a mixed reality because what they had was they had a tablet with a, um, like a 3D cartoon kind of jumping around the stage. And then once they tapped on the, like a podium almost, um, like mountains started coming out and the uh, little robot guy, he knew where the table was. Um, so they're doing some pretty cool things um, in terms of overlapping uh, the computer drafted um, data and interacting with our own world, um, which also brings up their initiative for 360 degree videos and, over, and using Unity to kind of make a more immersive 360 degree video um so that creators like me who are in the 360 degree video space um can now use unity and um start implementing different um 2d objects and 3d objects into our videos um one cool demo that they showed was that um i think they were in like some garden with um like the wood wood cross fence thing um, all around it and they showed like a digital bird flying behind that fence but still in front of the sky which was super awesome um, that's definitely something um, I think the bait is coming out in the next couple weeks so that's definitely something I want to be trying with my videos um, it depending on how technical it gets with the uh, with the unity just because I don't know how to use unity and I don't know how to code so uh, that will be fun uh, Luckily, I'll be in Rhode Island for the summer, so I can kind of dedicate some weekend time for that. Um, but, I mean, overall, the Unity, I mean, coming from pro the leading uh, game engine for VR, of course, it was going to be optimistic about VR. Um, but I think I really enjoyed just hearing, um, there was a, there's a famous quote that I saw on LinkedIn that was, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And um, I think after watching uh, some of the speakers at from Unity talking about their optimism of the industry, I am uh, I am I am very ecstatic just to see where this future takes us. Um, and I think the big push after watching the after watching Facebook's um, 
F8 conference last week and then Unity's, um, there's going to be a huge push for creating a more interactive 360 degree video experience um, using the 2D and 3D digital objects. So I think that's going to be a huge push for that medium. Um, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. And um, yeah, and overall, I'm, I think it was a great conference. Um, I, I love to seeing how their partnerships with Google are evolving, especially in the AR space. Um, so I'm, it, it leads to a, per, a summer um, full of exploration for probably me, a smaller uh, content creator, and then the bigger creators. Um, so it's very exciting. And um, we'll see where the summer takes us, but hopefully I'll have a Re60 video up by next week, hopefully before uh, I do another report. I'll try to it's been a while since I've edited a 360 degree video, so there might be uh, some dust to dust to wipe off. But uh, yeah, I mean, have a good weekend. Um, and if there's any sudden VR news, I think I'm going to be doing my reports based off of news rather than trying to do it daily. I mean, I'm going get, to get more of a regular schedule over the summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's something important, then I'm just going to throw up a video because all I do is film on my iPhone so yeah uh yeah if you uh, want to continue this conversation about the unity vision summit or oculus news about going into e3 um hit me up on twitter at rejuvenation uh instagram at rejuvenation or if you want the more content side re60 uh yeah have a good weekend <music>